In this problem, we have two rigid bodies, bar OA, I'm going to label this endpoint A, and the disk. The disk is in contact with a fixed horizontal surface at this point, which I will label as E. No slip there. It's in contact with the bar OA at this point, which I'm going to label as F. The system moves in a horizontal plane. It's released from rest. Whenever this middle of the, the, the center, I should say, of the disk is a distance D immediately to the right of O. And what we want to do is find the speed of C once the center of the disk has moved an additional distance D to the right. We're looking for change in um, speed for change in position. So the work energy equation would be the obvious choice. And we know with the work energy approach that um, we want to make the system usually as large as we can. So I'm going to put both the bar and the disk in the single FBD. So the, the disk, like this, we've got the um, the bar like that. So we look at the forces acting on that system as a whole. What forces do we have? We've got OX and OY. The reaction force is there at the pin. There's a normal reaction force of N at that contact point E. There's a friction force. And then there is the applied force F, which the problem says it's always perpendicular to the bar applied there at point A. And I think that that's it. Going through the forces one by one, we can strike out OX and OY because they do not do work. They act at a fixed point. Same way for F and N. They do not do work because they act at a no-slip point. The only force that we need to deal with is going to be the applied force F whenever we do our work calculations. So the work energy equation. So thing starts out from rest, so T1 is a zero. The potential at both the beginning and the end states is a, is a zero because the problem is in the horizontal plane. T2 we have two rigid bodies. Each rigid body, we have a choice of referencing the kinetic energy back to either the center of mass or the fixed point. In this case, for both the bar and the wheel, we're going to reference it back to a fixed point. For the bar, it's going to be IO omega O A squared. This is for the bar. And for the disk, I'm going to reference that back to that fixed contact point or the no-slip contact point E, omega D like this. So this is the disk. Keep in mind that based on the way that I wrote things down, I'm going to need to use the parallel axis theorem to write out the mass moment of inertia about O. It's what it is about G, 1 12th ML squared plus M times the distance from O to the center of mass squared, that's ML, or that's going to be L over 2 squared. So combining those together, it's one-third ML squared. And for the disk, it's mass moment of inertia about the contact point is what it is about the center of mass, one-half MR squared, plus M times the distance between E and the center of mass, that's R, we need to do a square of that. And together we get three halves in one squared. So both of these are a result of the parallel axis out there. And lastly, then the work that needs to be done, or the work that needs to be calculated for F. In, th in theory, that's going to be the force written as a vector projected on the unit tangent vector for A integrated over the path of A. Well, we know that OA is pinned to the ground at O, so the, the path of A is a circle. F is perpendicular to OA, so that F is always going to be tangent to that path. So this is truly just F. 
f is a constant like, like this. So that's going to be f times the distance through which a moves, like that. Let me come back up here and define the angle of, of theta. Theta is this here. So again, since the bar OA is rotating about O, we can say that the distance that's traveled by A is going to be the um, distance L times the change in angle of that bar. So it's the initial theta minus the final times L. F with a plus sign in front. So we have T and we have the work. What we need to do is to be able to relate omega OA and omega D and in the end we need to write that in terms of the speed of C. That's all what kinematics is about. For the kinematics what I'm going to do is draw a right tri a, tri a triangle. This this uh, triangle is going to be O to F, F down here to C. That's a right a right, a right angle, and then I have this like that. So in the end, I've got this as being C. This being the contact point between the bar and the disc there at F, and this is the pin there. This is the angle that I called theta. This is a right triangle. This is the distance um, for C. So let me call that um, SC. This length here is R, like that. So from the picture, we, we can say that uh, the distance r is equal to the distance traveled by c times sine of, of the angle. So what we have then is that for any position, theta is given by the inverse sine of sc divided by r. So therefore, theta 1, our initial one, is the inverse sine of distance SC, which was D over R, and for position 2, it's going to be the initial, I'm sorry, the inverse sign of 2D over R, because C will have moved a distance, an additional distance there of D. So that gives us the angles that we, we need. I can take that same kin kinematics equation and do a time der derivative. So R dot, which is, of course, is equal to a zero is sc dot sine theta plus sc times theta dot cosine and so therefore from there I can say that theta dot is equal to a minus sc dot divided by sc times tangent of theta in other words, um, this is the expression for omega OA. Now, since E is a no-slip point, it says that the speed of C is equal to R times omega d, so therefore omega d is equal to vc divided by r. And lastly, one thing that I should have said here is that vc and sc dot are the same. That is, the speed of c is given by the time derivative of this distance there of sc. So I have an expression for omega d. I have an expression for omega OA, everything in terms of the, the speed there of C. So we're in a great shape to solve. So to solve for, I have that the, um, the work done again, that's F times L 
theta 1 minus theta 2. We found a way to calculate those. Is equal to 1 half I O omega O A. So that is equal to uh, V C divided by the distance S C, which is a 2D. Tan theta 2 squared plus one half mass moment of inertia about E times VC over R squared. So we have one single equation we can solve for the speed of point C. So the basics here is that we use the work energy equation because that relates position to speed. We write things down in terms of T. We find the work due to the applied force F. The kin kinematics here is a very important part, and the kinematics were needed to be able to relate the omega OA back to the speed of C, the omega for the disk back to C, and that was able to give us our single equation in terms of the single unknown of BC.